Alright guys, spooky story time! So I might mess up on these, but just enjoy the stories. As the night falls and the moon casts an eerie glow over the landscape, our minds begin to wander to the supernatural. In the silence we hear creaks and whispers and feel a chill run down our spines. It's a perfect time to gather around and tell ghost stories, to share tales of the unknown and the unexplainable. So turn off the lights, grab a blanket, and all your snacks, and be prepared to be spooked. Here we go. Alright, so the first story is The Haunted Road. Once, there was a small town nestled in a valley surrounded by dense forest. The only way in or out of the town was a narrow, winding road that snaked through the woods and locals called it the Haunted Road due to the many stories of strange occurrences and ghostly sightings that had been reported over the years. One summer evening, a group of college students decided to take a drive down the infamous road to see if the stories were true. They piled into a beat-up old van and set off, laughing and joking as they drove deeper into the forest. As they rounded a bend, the van suddenly lurched to a halt. The driver started the the driver tried starting the engine, but it wouldn't turn over. They were stuck in the middle of the road, miles from civilization. As they sat there, the air around them grew silent and still. The trees rustled ominously in the breeze, and the sky darkened as the storm clouds rolled in. Suddenly, a figure appeared in the middle of the road ahead of them. It was a woman dressed in white, her long hair blowing in the wind. The students watched in horror as the woman began to glide towards them and her eyes fixed on the van. She passed right through the closed door and the van started shaking violently. The students screamed as they felt cold hands grabbing at them, pulling them out of their seats. In the chaos, one of the students managed to escape and ran down the road towards town. When he finally reached safety and turned back to look, he saw the van was gone and the road was once again silent and still. From that day on, the road was avoided by all those who knew of its haunted history. The very brave souls who dared to venture down it never returned, and the legend of the haunted road lived on for generations to come. <clears throat> spooky. Very spooky. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here goes another one. The Old Cabin in the Woods Deep in the heart of the forest stood a cabin. It was an old abandoned structure with creaky wooden boards and windows that had long since been shattered. The locals whispered that the cabin was cursed. The strange things strange things happened there and that anyone who set foot inside was never seen again. Despite these rumors, a group of friends, probably teenagers, decided to venture into the woods to explore the cabin. They were thrill seekers looking for a scare. And they didn't believe in curse or curses or ghosts. As they entered the forest, the trees grew thicker and the air grew colder. The forest was eerily quiet, as if the animals had all fled in fear. Finally, they reached the cabin, and it loomed before them like a dark shadow against the trees. The door was locked, but one of the friends managed to find a way through a broken window. As they entered, the air grew even colder, and the interior of the cabin was dark and musty. Strange symbols were etched to the walls, and the furniture was covered in dust and cobwebs. <clears throat> As they explored, they heard strange whispers and creaking sounds coming from the shadows. They told themselves it was just their imagination, but the fear in their hearts were growing, was growing. Suddenly, one of their friends disappeared, and they heard a blood-curdling scream. The remaining friends tried to find their missing companion, but the cabin seemed to shift and change around them, trapping them inside. They realized too late that the cabin was not cursed, but inhabited by a malevolent spirit that preyed on those who dared to enter. 
As the night wore on, the friends were chased through the twisting corridors by the ghostly presence, their screams echoing through the forest. None of them were ever seen again, and the cabin remained abandoned, a place of fear and darkness that no one dared to enter again. And so the legend of the cabin in the woods lived on, a warning to those who dared to seek adventure in the dark and unknown places of the world. Hmm. <clears throat> well, there's that one. The next story is called The Village. It's going to be good. There was once a small village nestled in a secluded corner of a dense forest. The villagers lived a peaceful life, but there was always a sense of unease that permeated the air. Strange occurrences were becoming more and more frequent, and people began to whisper about the dark forces that lurked in the woods. One day, a group of children went missing without a trace. The villagers searched high and low, but they found no sign of the missing children. As the days went on, more and more children disappeared, and the villagers became increasingly frightened. And then one night, a villager claimed to have seen a figure lurking in the woods. It was tall, with long, spindly arms and a face that was twisted in a grotesque grin. Other villagers soon reported seeing the same figure, and they began to realize that this was the source of their troubles. The villagers banded together to try to find the creature, but it proved elusive. Every night they heard its eerie laughter and saw its shadowy form darting through the trees. They tried to fortify their homes, but it seemed that nothing could keep the creature out. As the villagers became more and more desperate, they began to turn to each other. Accusations were thrown around, and some people even accused their neighbors of being in a in the league, in a league with the monster. The once peaceful village became a place of fear and suspicion. Finally, one night, the creature made its way into the village. It snatched up a screaming child and vanished into the darkness. The villagers chased after it, but they were no match for the creature, the creature's speed and agility. From that night on, the village was cursed. People continued to disappear, and those who remained lived in constant fear. Some say the creature still looks, lurks in the woods, waiting for its next victim to come along. And the villagers, once so close-knit and peaceful, are now a shadow of their former selves, haunted by the memory of what they lost. <coughs> mm, I'm scary. The Bridge there was once a small town nestled on the countryside, surrounded by rolling hills and winding rivers. In the center of the town was an old wooden bridge that spanned the river below. The bridge was said to be haunted by a ghost of a woman who died there many years before. According to the legend, the woman had been walking across the bridge one dark and stormy night, because <laughs> that's how it always is in these scary tales when she slipped and fell into the rushing river below. Her body was never found. It was said that her ghost still haunted the bridge, searching for her lost love. Many people in the town were afraid to cross the bridge at night, and some even claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of the woman hovering above the water. Despite the rumors, however, the bridge remained a vital part of the town's infrastructure, and people continued to use it every day. <clears throat> One evening, a young couple was walking across the bridge, hand in hand, and enjoying the cool breeze and the sound of the river rushing below. As they reached the middle of the bridge, they suddenly heard a faint whisper on the wind. They stopped and looked around, but there was no one in sight. Suddenly, the whisper became louder, and they heard a woman's voice calling out for her lost love. The couple looked around in terror as the ghostly figure of a woman appeared before them. Her hair flowing in the wind and her eyes filled with a sorrowful longing. The couple tried to run, but the ghostly figure seemed to follow them, her voice growing louder and more desperate with each passing moment. Finally, they reached the other side of the bridge and the, the ghostly figure disappeared, leaving the couple trembling with fear. 
From that day on, the legend of the haunted bridge became even more well known, and people in the town began to avoid it at all cost. However, the bridge remained a vital part of the town's history, and its ghostly presence served as a reminder of the power of love and dangers of the unknown. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Here we go. The haunted dollhouse. Long ago, in a small town, there was a beautiful but eerie dollhouse. The dollhouse was abandoned years ago and had been left to rot in a corner of an old, decrepit mansion. The mansion was said to be cursed, and no one dared to enter it after dark. One day, a young girl named Emma stumbled upon the mansion. While exploring the town, she was immediately drawn to the dollhouse and decided to take it home with her. No, no, no! Emma was thrilled to have found such a beautiful dollhouse. She spent hours playing with the dolls, arranging the furniture, creating her own little world inside the tiny house. But, but strange things began to happen after Emma brought the dollhouse home. Every night, she would hear faint whispers coming from the dollhouse, and she could swear that she saw movement out of the corner of her eye. The, the dolls in the dollhouse seemed to have a life of their own, moving around and changing positions even when Emma wasn't playing with them. One night, Emma woke up to find the dolls in the dollhouse moving around by themselves. The dolls had come to life, and they were moving towards her. Emma tried to run, but she was surrounded by the dolls. They began to laugh and taunt her. Their once beautiful faces twisted in grotesque, demonic expressions. Terrified, Emma tried to escape, but she found herself trapped inside the dollhouse. The dolls had taken control, and they were determined to keep her there forever. Emma tried to scream, but no sound came out of her mouth. She was trapped in a world of darkness and fear, with no hope of escape. Ooh. Here we go, next one. Secrets. Secret in the Attic. In a small town nestled in the rolling hills, there was a house that had been abandoned for many years. The old house had always been shrouded in mystery with rumors circulating about what was hidden within the walls. One day, a young couple purchased the house with the intention of renovating it and making it their home. As they began the renovations, they discovered a small door hidden in the ceiling of the attic. Curiosity getting the better of them, they climbed up to investigate. As they opened the door, and they were greeted by a the sight of a small room filled with old furniture, dusty books, and a collection of strange old-fashioned dolls. As they explored the room, they discovered a diary hidden inside an old tattered chest. The diary belonged to the previous owner of the house, a woman who had lived there many years ago. As they read through the pages of the diary, they uncovered a dark and twisted tale of love and obsession. The woman had fallen deeply in love with the man who had spurned her advances, causing her to become increasingly unhinged. She began to collect dolls, dressing them up and treating them as if they were real people. As time passed, her obsession grew, and she began to believe the dolls were her only companions. The young couple shuddered as they read the final pages of the diary, which described the woman's descent into madness and her eventual suicide. As they left the room, they closed the door and made the decision to leave the furniture and books and dolls untouched. They felt a sense of unease, as if the room was still inhabited by the ghostly presence of the woman and her beloved dolls. From that day on, they never ventured back into that room again. I don't know if I could live there. I'm sure a lot of you could, though. Here we go, the bassinet. In a small town, there was an old house that had been abandoned for many years. The house had once been the home of a wealthy family, but tragedy occurred, and the family had fled. The house was left to decay. One day, a group of teenagers decided to explore the abandoned house. 
As they made their way through the dusty old rooms, they stumbled upon an old baby bassinet tucked away in the corner of a bedroom. As they approached the bassinet, they felt a chill run down their spines. The bassinet was covered in a layer of dust and cobwebs, but there was something that made it really uneasy. As they peered inside, <clears throat> they saw that the bassinet was empty, but they could feel a strange presence in the room. Suddenly, they heard the sound of a baby crying, but there was no source of the sound. They quickly left the room, but as they made their way out of the house, they heard the sound of footsteps behind them. They turned to see a ghostly figure of a woman, dressed in old-fashioned clothing, holding a baby in her arms. The woman stared at them with a look of sadness on her face before disappearing into thin air. The teenagers realized the, the woman was a ghost of the former owner of the house who had lost her baby in a tragic accident. The baby bassinet was said to be haunted by the ghost of the lost child, and it was believed that the ghostly cries could still be heard on quiet nights. From that day on, the teenagers never returned to the abandoned house, fearful of the ghostly presence that still lingered within the walls. Next is the, uh, the horror of room 105. In a small hotel, there was a room that was never rented out, room 105, and it was said to be cursed. Many years ago, a young couple had checked into the room, but they had never checked out. The hotel staff had gone to investigate, but they found the room empty with no sign of the couple. From that day on, strange things began to happen in room 105. Guests who stayed in the room reported hearing strange noises, feeling cold presence in the air, and experiencing terrifying nightmares. One night, a group of paranormal investigators decided to spend the night in room 105. As they set up their equipment, they could feel a strange energy in the room. As the night wore on, they began to hear strange noises. The temperature in the room dropped suddenly. The door suddenly slammed shut and they were trapped inside. They soon realized they were not alone in the room. The ghostly figures of the missing couple appeared before them, their faces twisted in agony and fear. The investigators were frozen with fear as the ghost moved closer, their ghostly hands reaching out to touch them. Suddenly the ghost vanished and the door to the room opened. Shaken and terrified, the investigators fled the hotel never to return again. Room 105 remained empty, a testament to the horror that occurred within its walls, and a warning to those who dared to venture inside. Here we go. The Haunted Cemetery. In the heart of the American Midwest, there was a small town that had long been rumored to be haunted. The town cemetery was believed to be the site of an ancient Indian burial ground, and many people in the town believed the spirits of the dead still roamed the area. One night, a group of teenagers, of course, decided to explore the cemetery and see if they could find any evidence of the supernatural. As they made their way through the rows of graves, they began to feel an eerie presence around them. They heard strange whispers and footsteps that seemed to follow them wherever they went. Suddenly, they came upon a large, ancient-looking burial mound in the center of the cemetery. As they approached it, they saw a figure standing atop the mound, silhouetted against the, the moonlit sky. The figure was motionless and seemed to be watching them. The teenagers were terrified, but they couldn't look away. Suddenly, the figure began to move, slowly descending from the mound and approaching them. As it drew closer, they saw that it was a spectral figure, dressed in ancient Indian garb and carrying a bow and arrow. The teenagers tried to run, but they found themselves rooted to the spot. The spectral Indian warrior drew closer and closer until he was standing right in front of them. Suddenly, he vanished into the thin air, leaving the teenagers alone and trembling in fear. From that day forward, the teenagers ventured into the they never ventured into the cemetery again, but they could still hear the whispers and the footsteps of the spirits of the Indian burial ground haunting them from beyond the grave. That was scary. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
dark, haunted woods. Deep in the heart of the woods, there was a place where few dared to venture. It was said that the trees grew so thick and the underbrush was so dense that even the bravest hunters and hikers would get lost for days on end. But those who did venture too far into the woods, especially as the sun began to set, would sometimes hear strange noises rustling in the bushes, howls in the distance, and sometimes even the sound of whispered voices. And then there were the stories, tales told by the old-timers and passed down through generations of unspeakable horrors that lurked within those woods. Monsters with razor-sharp teeth and glowing eyes, ghosts of long-dead hikers, and witches who practiced their dark arts in hidden clearings. One story in particular stands out as the most terrifying of them all. It was said that there was an old cabin deep in the woods, hidden away from prying eyes. And within that cabin lived a hermit, a man who had long ago retreated from society and who now practiced unspeakable acts of dark magic. According to the legend, the hermit would be would lure unsuspecting travelers into his cabin, where he would perform twisted rituals on them, using their blood and bones to fuel his dark powers. Many who ventured into the woods would never return home with stories. Oops. Many who ventured into the woods would return home with stories of strange occurrences and eerie feelings, but some would never return at all. And those who did not return were rumored to have fallen victim to the hermit and his dark magic. Despite the warnings and the tales of horror, some still dared to venture into the woods, drawn by the allure of adventure and the thrill of the unknown. But those who did not, the risk, but for those who did, the risk were great and the consequences of getting lost or encountering one of the forest's many terrors were truly terrifying. The Plantation the story is set in an old plantation in Louisiana that had been abandoned for many years. The house had a dark history, and it was once a working plantation that relied on the labor of enslaved people. The story follows a family who ha has recently inherited the property and decided to restore it to its former glory. They were excited about the prospect of living in a beautiful historic home, but they soon realized that something was not quite right. Strange things began to happen as they started to renovate the house, objects moving on their own, stores slamming, and they hear, would hear disembodied voices and whispers in the night. They would start to feel like they are being watched and followed by an unseen presence. As they dig deeper into the history of the plantation, they uncover a dark and tragic past. And it turns out that the previous owners of the plantation were notorious slave owners who were known for their cruelty and brutality. The family soon realizes that the plantation is haunted by the spirits of the enslaved people who suffered and died there. They began to see apparitions of those spirits and hear their cries and moans in the night. As the haunting intensifies, the family starts to fear for their safety. They try to leave the plantation, but they find that they are trapped by the ghosts who are determined to make them suffer as they suffered. In the end, the family must confront the dark history of the plantation and find a way to put the spirits to rest. They must make amends for the sins of the past and find a way to break the cycle of violence and the suffering that has haunted the plantation for generations. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> the Stairway to Nowhere It was a warm summer evening when a group of friends decided to go for a hike in the woods. They had been planning this trip for weeks, and they were excited to explore the natural beauty of the forest. As they walked deeper into the woods, they stumbled upon a strange sight. A staircase made of old, weathered wood leading up to the trees. The staircase was unlike anything they had ever seen before. It was tall with steps that led into the canopy of the forest, seemingly to nowhere. 
The friends were both intrigued and frightened by the sight of the staircase, but their curiosity got the best of them. One by one, they began to climb the staircase, feeling a sense of unease and dread with each step. <clears throat> As they climbed higher, the forest around them grew darker and more foreboding, and the sounds of the forest grew fainter and more distant. Eventually, they reached the top of the staircase, but there was nothing there, just an empty clearing in the trees. They stood there, confused and disoriented, wondering what the purpose of the staircase could be. Suddenly, they heard a sound behind them. As they turned around, they saw a figure standing at the top of the staircase. It was a tall, shadowy figure with long arms and twisted, unnatural shape. The friends were paralyzed with fear as the figure advanced towards them, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. They tried to run, but their legs were heavy and slow, as if they were trapped in a nightmare. The figure was almost upon them when suddenly they woke up. <laughs> it had all been a dream, and they, they were back in their campsite, safe and unharmed. But as they looked around the forest, they could still see the staircase looming in the darkness, beckoning with their its eerie, eerie call. And that was a scary, scary dream. And here's one called The Fog. It was a dark and stormy night with a thick fog rolled in from the sea. The old town was shrouded in mist and the only sounds that could be heard were the distant clanging of the church bells and the mournful cries of the seagulls. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. People reported seeing ghostly apparitions drifting through the streets, their forms barely visible in the thick fog. Some claimed to have heard eerie whispers and moans, as if the very air itself was haunted. One group of friends decided to venture out into the fog, hoping to catch a glimpse of the supernatural. They walked cautiously through the deserted streets, their breaths visible in the chilly air. Suddenly they heard a faint rustling sound, as if something was moving in the mist. They turned to see a, a figure emerging from the fog. Its shape indistinct and its shadowy. As it grew closer, as it drew closer, they could see that it was a woman dressed in a long flowing gown that billowed in the wind. Her face was obscured by the mist. Her eyes glowed and with an otherworldly light. The friends froze in terror as the woman approached them her arms outstretched as if to embrace them, but as she drew closer, they realized her embrace was not one of love, but of death. Her hands were cold as ice, and her touch sent shivers down her spine. So, oh. With a scream, the friends turned and ran back to their homes with hearts pounding in fear. The fog lingered for days, and the townspeople whispered of the ghostly woman who haunted the streets and some claim she was the spirit of a woman who died in a shipwreck years ago, while others said she was a vengeful spirit seeking revenge on the living. To this day, the people of the town still tell the tale of the fog and the ghostly woman who roamed its streets, a reminder that even in the modern world, the past can come back to haunt us. The Haunted Carousel there was once a small town that had an old abandoned amusement park. The park was once a popular destination for families. Goodness, my stomach is making noises for you guys. Little airy noises. Okay, the park was once a popular destination for families, but after a series of accidents and deaths on the park's haunted carousel, it was shut down and left to decay. Despite the many warnings to stay away from the park, a, a group of, yes, you're right, teenagers decided to break in and explore the abandoned carousel. They were intrigued by the rumors of the ghostly carousel horses that haunted the ride, and they wanted to see if the rumors were true. As they made their way through the park, they heard the faint sound of the carousel music coming from the old ride. They cautiously approached the carousel, and to their surprise, they saw their ride was in perfect working order, despite years of neglect. 
the teenagers decided to take a ride on the carousel. But as soon as they boarded the horses, the ride began to spin faster and faster. The music grew louder and more ominous, and the teenagers realized they were no longer in control of the ride. Suddenly, the carousel horse that was rumored to be haunted came to life. Its eyes glowed red, and it, it began to gallop around the carousel, chasing the terrified teens. The other horses on the ride came to life, their eyes glowing with an eerie light. The teenagers tried to jump off, but they were trapped, unable to escape the haunted carousel's clutches. The ride continued to spin faster and faster, until the teenagers were thrown off the horses and onto the ground. As they lay on the ground, grasping for breath, gasping for breath, they saw the ghostly carousel horse galloping away into the night, disappearing into the darkness. From that day on, the teenagers never spoke of their experience at the haunted carousel, but the legend of the ghostly horse lived on, and the abandoned amusement park remained a place of fear and mystery for years to come. The Night at the Haunted Airbnb There was a young couple who decided to book an Airbnb for a weekend getaway in the countryside. The Airbnb was located in an old Victorian mansion that had been converted into a bed and breakfast. The couple arrived at the mansion in the late afternoon and were greeted by the owner, who showed them their room on the third floor. As they settled into their room, they noticed that the decor was... The decor was old-fashioned and a bit creepy, but they shrugged it off and decided to explore the mansion before it got too dark outside. As they walked through the hallways, they noticed that some of the doors were locked, and they couldn't help but wonder what was behind them. Nosy. As they made their way back to the room, they heard strange noises coming from one of the locked doors. They tried to ignore it, thinking it was just the wind but the noise grew louder and more disturbing. They decided to investigate because curiosity killed the cat. And as they got closer to the door, they noticed it was covered in scratches and what appeared to be dried blood. Suddenly, they heard a loud scream coming from inside the room. They quickly ran back to their own room and locked the door behind them. They could hear footsteps and whispers outside the door, but they were scared to open it. The night was long and terrifying, with strange noises and unexplained occurrences happening throughout the mansion. The couple barely slept. I wouldn't sleep there at all, and couldn't wait to leave the next morning. When they checked out, they asked the owner about the locked door and the strange noises they heard. The owner seemed surprised and told him that the room had been locked for years and that nobody had ever reported hearing any noises before. The couple left feeling unsettled and convinced that they had experienced something supernatural. They decided to never stay in an Airbnb again and opted for more traditional hotels in the future. Oh my. Alright, next. Nightmare on the Highway It was a dark and stormy night, and Jane was driving down a desolate highway. She was in a hurry to reach her destination, so she didn't pay much attention to the eerie feeling that crept over her as she drove down the road. Suddenly, a large truck pulled up behind her, its headlights blinding her. Jane tried to speed up, but the truck stayed right on her tail. She could see the driver's silhouette through the windshield, but couldn't make out the details. As the storm grew worse, the truck driver seemed to get more aggressive, honking his horn and flashing his high beams. Jane tried to shake him off, but the truck stayed right behind her, driving dangerously close. It was almost as if the driver was trying to run her off the road. Finally, after what felt like hours of terrifying chase, Jane saw an exit ramp up ahead. She swerved into it, hoping to lose the truck driver. But as she drove down the dark, winding road, she realized the truck was still behind her. As Jane was about to call the police, she saw something that made her blood run cold. 
The truck driver had a large axe in his hand and was waving it menacingly out the window. Jane realized she was in grave danger. With her heart pounding, Jane put her foot down on, on the accelerator and sped down the road, desperate to escape. But the truck driver was relentless and he continued to chase her axe in hand. As Jane reached the edge of town, she saw a police car parked on the side of the road. She swerved to a stop next to it, honking her horn and screaming for help. The police officers quickly apprehended the truck driver, who turned out to be a notorious serial killer who had been, who had been terrorizing the area for months. Jane was lucky to have escaped with her life, but that memory of that terrifying chase haunted her forever. That would be scary. Haunted Forest Deep in the heart of a dense forest, there was an eerie atmosphere that made people uneasy. The trees were tall, the branches intertwined, blocking out the sun and casting a shadow over the forest floor. It was rumored that the forest was haunted by the spirits of those who had died there long ago. Legend had it had it that a group of travelers had once entered the forest never to be seen again. Their disappearance was blamed on the forest's malevolent spirit which was said to lure some people deeper into the woods until they were lost forever. Some said the spirit would take the form of a beautiful woman, leading travelers astray with her enchanting voice. Despite the rumors, some adventurous souls still ventured into the forest, hoping to unravel the mystery of the haunting, but they would soon regret their decision. As they delved deeper into the forest, strange things began to happen. The rustling leaves and the creaking branches began to whisper their names, and they felt a cold breath on the back of their necks. Shadows flitted across their vision, and they heard eerie laughter echoing through the trees. Soon the travelers realized that they were hopelessly lost. The trees seemed to shift and twist around them, leading them in circles. They stumbled upon strange altars <clears throat> and offerings, evidence of forest dark secrets. As night fell, the forest grew even more sinister. The travelers would huddle together, hearing strange noises and seeing glowing eyes in the darkness. The air grew thick with a sense of dread, and they knew they were not alone. Some say the travelers managed to escape the forest, but they were never the same again. They were haunted by the memory of the forest's malevolent spirit, and some claim they could still hear its laughter echoing in their dreams. From that day on, the forest remained shrouded in mystery and fear, and few dared to enter, and those who did never returned. The legend of the haunted forest lived on, warning to all who dared to venture too far into the unknown. <clears throat> that was good. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm coughing. This is going to be a raw video. All the raw. Haunted book. In an old dusty library, there sat a book that was unlike any other. It was bound in black leather and had strange glowing symbols etched on its pages. The librarians had always kept it locked away in a special case, warning visitors never to touch it or even look at it for long for fear of what might happen. One day, a curious young woman named Rachel stumbled upon the book while browsing the library. Despite the warnings, she couldn't resist the temptation to take a closer look. As she flipped through the pages, she felt a strange energy pulsating through her fingers. Suddenly, the symbols on the pages began to glow brighter and brighter until they were blinding. Rachel felt herself being pulled into the book, and before she knew it, she was standing in a dark and eerie forest. As she looked around, she realized she was no longer in her own world, but in another dimension altogether. The trees were twisted and gnarled, and the sky was a sickly green color. She knew she had to find a way back into her own world, but she didn't even know where to begin. 
As she wandered through the forest, she began to hear strange whispers and laughter. She felt like she was being watched, the hairs on the back of her neck standing. She tried to run, but the forest seemed to go on forever. She couldn't find her way out. As the days turned into weeks, Rachel was forced to survive in this strange and dangerous dimension. She encountered all sorts of terrifying creatures that had to use all her wits and courage to stay alive. Eventually, she discovered a way to use the book to return to her own world. She returned to the library, but she was never the same again. She had seen things that no human should ever see, and she knew the book was not meant to be in the hands of mortals. From that day on, the book was locked away in an even more secure case, and no one dared to touch it again. Ooh. Next story. It lurks on the lake. In a small town nestled behind, beside a tranquil lake, there was a legend that had been passed down through generations. It was said that, that a terrifying creature lived deep within the murky waters, waiting to drag unsuspecting victims down into the depths. One hot summer night. Guess what? A group of teenagers decided to go for a swim in the lake. They laughed and joked as they splashed around in the cool water, unaware of the danger that lurked beneath the surface. Suddenly, one of the teenagers felt something brush against their leg. They shrugged it off, thinking it was a plant or a fish, but they felt it again, and this time much stronger. The water around them began to churn and bubble, and a massive form rose from the depths. It was a creature unlike anything they had ever seen before. Its eyes glowed like hot coals, and its body was covered in a slimy scales. The teenagers screamed and tried to swim away, but the creature was too fast. It grabbed them with its massive tentacles and dragged them under the water one by one. As the sun rose the next morning, the townspeople gathered by the shore, searching for any sign of the missing teenagers. All they found was a single tentacle washed up on the shore. From that day on, no one ever went swimming in that lake again. Years went by, and the legend of the creature in the lake faded into memory. But some say that on quiet nights, when the moon is full and the water is still, you can still hear the faint whispers of the teenagers calling out from the depths of the lake, warning others not to make the same mistake they did. Oh my gosh. Next is the beast. All right, deep in the rugged mountains, there lived a terrifying monster that haunted the land for centuries. The locals called it the Mountain Beast, and they warned travelers to steer clear of the region for fear of encountering the fearsome creature. Legend has it that the Mountain Beast was once a man who had angered the gods and his with his wicked deeds. As punishment, he was transformed into a hideous monster, doomed to roam the mountains in search of prey. The creature was said to have razor-sharp claws and enormous fangs and eyes that glowed fiery coals in the darkness. Despite the warnings, however, there were always those who dared to venture into the mountains, either out of curiosity or necessity. Some were hunters seeking game, while others were travelers trying to reach a distant village or town. But more often than not, they never returned. One day, a young adventurer named Ryan decided to brave the mountains in search of a legendary treasure said to be hidden in a cave deep in the heart of the range. Armed with a sword and a lantern, he set out on his journey, determined to find his prize. As he climbed higher and higher, the air grew colder and the wind began to howl. Soon, he found himself in the midst of a fiery blaze fierce blizzard, the snow and ice whipping around him in a frenzy, but he pressed on, driven by his determination to reach his treasure. Suddenly, he heard a low growl, 
and he spun around to see a pair of glowing eyes staring at him from the darkness. The mountain beast had found him. Ryan drew his sword and prepared to fight, but the creature was way too fast and strong. With a swipe of its claws, it knocked the sword from his hand and sent him tumbling down the mountainside. Bruised and battered, Rain lay in the snow. Ryan lay in the snow, not Rain, wondering if he would survive the ordeal. But to his surprise, this creature did not attack him again. Instead, it simply just stood there, watching him with its fiery eyes. As the blizzard subsided, Ryan realized that the mountain beast was not the mindless monster he had always, you know, imagined. In fact, it seemed almost sad. As it gazed into his eyes, he saw a glimmer of humanity there, a spark of the man that it had once been. With a certain, sudden burst of courage, Ryan approached the creature, and to his amazement, it didn't attack him. Instead, it bowed its great head in submission, as if it acknowledged his bravery. From that day on, Ryan and the mountain beast became unlikely friends. Ryan would visit the creature in its lair, bringing it food and companionship, and the beast would protect him from the other dangers in the mountains. And though the locals still feared the mountain beast, Ryan knew it was not a mindless monster, but a lonely creature cursed by the gods to wander the mountain alone. Hmm. That was good. Alright, here's a little skinwalker tale. In a remote Navajo reservation, there lived a young girl named Tala, who had always been fascinated by the stories of skinwalkers that her grandmother used to tell. Despite her fear of the dark and the unknown, Tala couldn't help but feel drawn to the tales of shape-shifting witches who could transform into animals and prey on unsuspecting victims. One night, while walking home from her grandmother's house, Tala heard a strange noise in the bushes. She stopped in her tracks and looked around, but saw nothing unusual. But as she continued to walk, she felt a cold breeze on her neck and heard the sound again, this time closer. Suddenly, a large black dog emerged from the bushes and started to follow her. Tala tried to ignore the dog and keep walking, but it kept getting closer and closer until it was right behind her. She turned to shoo it away, but froze in terror as she saw its glowing red hot whole eyes in the darkness. Tala realized too late that the dog was not a dog at all, but a skinwalker in disguise. She tried to run, but the creature was fast and it caught up to her. As it lunged at her, Tala closed her eyes and prepared for the worst. But to her surprise, nothing happened, and when she opened her eyes, the skinwalker had vanished, leaving her alone in the dark, shaken and scared. Tala ran all the way home, vowing never to venture out in the night again. But the experience had left its mark on her, and she soon found herself plagued by nightmares of the skinwalker. Every night, she would dream of the creature stalking her, its eyes burning with an otherworldly fire until she woke up screaming. Tala knew she had to do something to rid herself of the curse. She consulted with her grandmother, who told her the only way to defeat a skinwalker was to confront it directly and call out its name. Only then would the curse be broken. Summoning all her courage, Tala returned to the spot where she encouraged the skinwalker. She called out to it using the name her grandmother had given her and waited for a response. At first, there was only silence, but then she heard a low growl, and the shape of a large black dog emerged from the darkness. Tala stood her ground, staring at it in the fiery eyes, and repeated the name again and again, until the skinwalker began to convulse and writhe in pain. Finally, with a blood-curdling scream, the skinwalker vanished, leaving Tala alone in the darkness once more. But this time she felt a sense of release and triumph, knowing she had faced her fear and emerged victorious. And though she still remembered the tales of the skinwalker, she no longer feared them, for she knew she had the power to defeat them if she had to. Oh, I like that. 
This one is called A Haunting. There was a family who moved into a new house in a quiet suburban neighborhood. They were excited to start their new life in a bigger and nicer home. However, as soon as they settled in, strange things started happening. At first, it was just small things like doors opening and closing on their own and unexpected noises in the middle of the night. The family brushed it off as their imagination and tried to ignore it. But as time passed, the occurrences became more frequent and more sinister. The family would wake in the middle of the night and find their furniture rearranged and their belongings moved to different places. They started hearing voices and footsteps in the empty parts of the house, and sometimes they would even see shadowy figures lurking in the corners of their vision. The family tried to investigate, but they found no logical explanation for what was happening. They even called in paranormal investigators, who discovered the house was built on ancient er burial ground. The spirits of the dead were not happy about the new inhabitants in their territory. The family tried to sell the house, but no one would buy it once they found out about its haunted history. The family was trapped in the house with no escape from the malevolent spirits that haunted them day and night. In the end, the family was forced to abandon the house and move away, leaving all their possessions behind. The house remained empty, a dark and foreboding presence in the neighborhood, warning those who dared to move in. Oh, that was good. The Corn Maze There was a small town that prided itself on its annual corn maze, which was known to be the biggest and most challenging in the entire state. Every Halloween, locals and visitors alike would come from far and wide to try and navigate their way through the maze. One year, a group of friends decided to take on the challenge. They entered the maze on a cool e autumn evening, laughing and joking as they made their way through the twisting pathway of the corn. But as the sun began to set, the group started to realize something wasn't right. They had been walking for hours, and they couldn't seem to find their way out. The maze seemed to be shifting and changing, the paths leading them in circles and dead ends. They began to hear strange noises in the distance, like whispers and rustling in the cornstalks. As the night grew darker, the group became more and more frightened. They tried to call out for, for help on their phones, but there was no signal. They started to feel like they were being watched, and they couldn't shake the feeling of something sinister lurking just out of sight. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the group stumbled upon a clearing in the center of the maze. In the center of the clearing stood an old abandoned barn. As they approached the barn, they heard a strange chanting coming from inside. Despite their fear, the group entered the barn, hoping to find help or an explanation for what was happening. But that what they found was far worse than they could have ever imagined. Inside the barn, they discovered a group of hooded figures gathering around a glowing ancient-looking symbol carved into the floor. The figures were chanting in a language the group didn't recognize, and as they turned to look at the intruders, the group realized they were not human. The friends ran as fast as they could, desperate to escape the haunted corn maze and the dark forces that lurked within. They finally found their way out, but they would never forget the terror they experienced that night, and they never returned to the town's annual corn maze again. Well, they got lucky. I got lucky. I didn't think it was going to end that way. Here's the journal. In an old abandoned house, a curious teenager discovered an old journal hidden in a dusty corner. The journal was filled with strange and cryptic writings, and the teenager started to read it, realized that, be that it belonged to the previous owner of the house, who had disappeared under mysterious, mysterious circumstances. As the teenager delved into the journal, they began to experience strange and unexplainable occurrences. At first, it was just a minor, minor things like doors creaking and opening on their own, and unexplained noises in the night. But soon, the occurrences became more frequent and more terrifying. 
the teenager started to see ghostly apparitions in the house and hear disembodied voices whispering in her ear. They began to feel they were being followed, and they couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent was lurking just out of sight. And as the days went by, the teenager became more and more obsessed with the journal, desperate to uncover the secrets it contained. They spent hours poring over the pages, trying to decipher all the strange symbols and codes. But the more that they read, the deeper they fell into the darkness that surrounded them. They started to have vivid and terrifying nightmares that could no longer they could no longer tell the difference between reality and the twisted fantasies of their own. In the end, the teenager was consumed by the evil that had taken hold of the house. They were never seen again, and the old journal journal remained hidden waiting for its next victim to uncover its secrets and unleash the horror that lay within. Okay, guys, that's been about an hour. And I'm going to stop there. And I hope you guys enjoyed those spooky stories. And I will do another hour next week. So more to come. Be doing some spooky stories and some reddit stories maybe next week i'll do the reddit stories so i hope you guys liked them sorry it's all raw not edited but i hope you guys enjoy this little spooky time thank you guys for listening and more soon from tells told in the dark